motion graphics can be very simple or very complex to create. Like anything else, you will need to learn some basic techniques. So today, let me show you how to animate a letter. Open a new file. Create a canvas that is 1500 by 1500 pixels. Leave the resolution at 300 ppi. If the units of measurement you see on your screen are not the same as mine, click on the little arrows on the side of each of the dialog boxes to access the drop-down menu. Pixels are located at the very bottom of the list. Click on the Content tab. If you want to change the color of your background, click on this box. A new window appears with some choices. You can use any of these color swatches or choose a specific shade or tint from the color wheel. I am going to make my background a little darker. As you can see, the new color I chose is now displayed in this box. We are done here, so let's click OK. Leave the layers to one. Hit uh, Create. Lock the background uh, this way, uh, you won't paint on it by accident. For this uh, particular demonstration, I am going to need uh, to see a grid of some kind. Let me show you how uh, to get it in Krita. Go to View. Move all the way down until you see Show Grid. Check the box to activate the functionality. Create a vector layer. Grab the text tool. With the left mouse button, drag your cursor across the canvas to create a text box. Don't worry about the dimension of the box, any size will do. As soon as you release your finger from the left mouse button, a new window appears. This is your text editor control panel. First, we need to get rid of this default text and replace it with the letter of our choice. Highlight the text and hit the delete button on your keyboard. Type any letter of your choice. You can capitalize it if you want. I am going to animate the letter S. As you can see, the letter is very small. It's because the size 8 is currently activated. To change the size, just highlight the value you see in the dialog box and write a new number over it. I am going to type 200. Click Enter to validate the changes. The last thing you need to do is choose a new font. I'll choose the Book Antiqua. And we are done here. Click Save and Close. Now, sometimes the letter will show outside the canvas like mine. <laughs> no worries, this can be easily fixed. Just grab the center of the box and move it wherever you want. Before to move on, maybe rename your layer. Obviously, uh, this is uh, totally optional. I am going to rename mine Letter. As a reminder for all of you who are new to my channel, to rename a layer, you need to click on F2 or you can also double click on the layer. Before to move on to the animation's workspace, we need to convert our vector layer into a paint layer. We uh, cannot animate uh, vector layers, uh, so let's do that. Right-click on the layer. Go all the way down until you see Convert. Now choose to paint layer. Go to the top right corner of your interface and click on the Choose a Workspace icon to open the drop-down menu panel. 
You can use the default animation workspace located at the very top of the list, or you can use your own custom-built animation workspace. I will uh, choose the one I created with you a few weeks ago. Click anywhere on the interface to exit this panel. Our letter layer is active. As a reminder, whatever you do on these layers here can be done as well on the layers displayed in the timeline. Both dockers are connected. We are on the letter layer. Click on the very first box frame in the timeline to activate it. We are going to transform this regular layer into an animation layer. To do so, right-click on the activated box frame. A menu panel appears. Choose Create Duplicate Frame. We are using this option because we already have a graphic present on the layer. Only use a Create Blank Frame when your layer is completely empty and you are about to start a drawing from scratch. Now that you have created this duplicate frame, a light bulb icon appeared on the layer. This is the Onion Skin button. We'll get back to it later. In the new Krita 5.0, I believe a play button appears instead. Light bulb or play button, this means that your layer has been successfully converted to an animation layer. We need to duplicate this frame several times in order to start working on the animation. Click on the next frame box to activate it. Right-click and choose Create Duplicate Frame again. Repeat this process a few times. Alright, we have now five duplicated frames. We need more. There is a trick that will help us go faster. As you can see, the last frame is still highlighted, meaning it is still active. Holding the Shift key on your keyboard, click on the very first frame. All five frames are now highlighted and selected. Right-click and choose Copy to Clipboard. Click on the next empty frame to make it active, right-click and this time choose Paste from Clipboard. Repeat this process as many times as you need. Click on the last frame. Now look at this window. It tells you the location of your frame. So we are on frame 29. We can tell Krita that our animation starts at 0 and ends at frame 29. Highlight the default number 100 and replace it with 29. Before to hit the play button, click here to get to the very beginning of your animation. Now hit play. The animation will loop indefinitely until you stop it. Right now there is nothing happening because we haven't done any changes to this letter. We are going to start working on it and we are going to work backward. 
Turn on the onion skin. As a quick reminder, the onion skin allows you to see anything you removed from a previous frames here in green and anything removed from next frames here in red. We are not going to work on the last frame, number 29. This needs to be left alone. So uh, click on it to activate it and with your left mouse button, uh, drag it away and drop it uh, anywhere you want. Click on uh, frame 28 to activate it. Grab the rectangular selection tool. In the tool options docker, make sure that the add action button is turned on. Select a first area on your letter and hit delete on your keyboard. As explained earlier, anything removed before the last frame, in our case frame 29, will be displayed in green. Click on the next frame. With your cursor, select a new area to remove and make sure it overlaps with a prior one and fuse into a bigger area. Hit delete. You are going to repeat this process until all the letter is removed from your screen. We are left with two extra frames holding the shift key, click on both frames to select them and with your left mouse button grab and move them at the very end of your animation. I am going to move the entire animation at the center of my timeline. If I click on the last frame, it tells me that I am now on frame 47. So I need to correct the end of my animation. I'll replace 29 with 47. Before to continue, let me look and see if the animation is working properly. All right, we are good, we can continue. Add a new layer above your background and rename it Dots. Our new layer is now displaying in the timeline. Click on the very first frame box to activate it. Right click and this time choose create blank frame. We are using this option since our layer is completely empty and we are about to draw something from scratch. As usual, the onion skin icon appeared, so we are good to go. Grab your freehand brush type 40 or any other size that you want in the size box and click enter. Now paint a dot. Click on the next box frame and this time choose a create duplicate frame. Use the grid as your guide and create a new dot. Type E on your keyboard, it is the shortcut to get the eraser, and remove the first dot. Type E again to get back to the brush. Repeat this process until you reach the beginning of the letter S. I have replaced my background with an image I downloaded from Pixabay and I locked it. It is completely optional here. 
Now let's play the little animation. It's not uh, fancy, but I think it's a good exercise uh, for beginners. Go to file. Choose a render animation. Make sure that the video tab is uh, selected. The FFmpeg you installed with me a few weeks ago will show up automatically, so you don't need to do anything here. Make sure that the GIF image is selected in the drop-down menu. However, if you rather create a short video that will not loop, choose the MPEG4 video and an MP4 file will be created instead. But here I want my animation to loop, so I'll choose a GIF image. The only thing left to do is choose a folder on your computer to upload the video. Click on this icon and select your folder. When all is done, click OK. The rendering will take place. And you are done! For those of you who are interested in the challenge, here are a few rules. Have fun and I'll see you in the next video! Au revoir et à bientôt!